Many people believe cancer is on the increase now, it was not there before. But the truth of the matter is that way back when Albert Cook is the first Western trained doctor came to Uganda and he was based in Mengo. If you look at his records, which ended up at the medical school library, he described the cases of cancer in those days. gentleman, a medical doctor by name Paul Carbon. Paul Carbon had gone around Africa trying to look for places where the National Cancer Institute in the United States could collaborate. And in 19, 1966, he had gone to West Africa, checked on a number of universities, he went to North Africa, checked on a number of universities. He went to South Africa, checked on a number of universities. He finally came to Makerere and he said, I've found it. <laughs> I've found it. And he was welcomed. And at that time, he suggested that the National Cancer Institute in the United States should work collaboratively with Makerere University. They agreed and signed a contract, a memorandum of understanding, with the Department of Surgery of Makerere University to undertake research and training and treating children with Burkitt's lymphoma. Dr. Ziegler was a man who did his training uh, at Cornell University, Cornell Medical School, and worked extensively in Bellevue in New York. Um, and he came down to the National Cancer Institute as part of a research team that was interested in Burkitt's lymphoma treatment. His mentor, his boss, Paul Carbone, um, said, you know, we're, we have this standing collaboration or we're trying to develop a collaboration between the American National Cancer Institute and Mulago, and Mulago Hospital, particularly the McHarrie Department of Surgery. Um, would you be interested in the possibility of going and setting up an experimental treatment facility? Uh, John leapt at the opportunity. The Lymphoma Treatment Center was very successful. And the success of this center led to the founding of a sister unit in 1969 called the Solid Tumor Center. The two units, the Lymphoma Treatment Center and the Solid Tumor Center became what is now known as the Uganda Cancer Institute. In terms of bringing patients to the unit, Ziegler and colleagues actually drove far up country with flyers um, showing images of Burkitt's lymphoma and saying, you know, if you are seeing any children um, with this condition, please refer them to the hospital, um, we'll give them bus, bus vouchers, we'll give them food, um, and we will also give them treatment. In the early days of the Cancer Institute, the Cancer Institute was actually a recipient of the Alaska Award, and the Alaska Award is given, um, it's, it's really thought of as one tier below the Nobel Prize. And this was some of the stuff that uh, John Ziegler, who was the first director of the Cancer Institute, got this award, and this was uh, because of the trials that were done here. Uganda Cancer Institute was the first site of combination chemotherapy the world over. So that's groundbreaking research. But also, um, discovery of Bucket's lymphoma was here at the Uganda Cancer Institute. The first use of chemotherapy for uh, liver cancer was here, hepatocellular carcinoma was here at the Uganda Cancer Institute. 
I joined the Uganda Cancer Institute in 1999 as a medical officer uh, special grade. Um, and uh, at that time, uh, the Uganda Cancer Institute had uh, only one uh, oncologist. So um, I, when I joined, um, I became the second doctor. Uh, over the years, I've contributed extensively to Kaposi sarcoma research, which is an HIV-associated cancer. We are describing the genetics of Kaposi sarcoma. We are describing the genetics of uh, endemic Bacchus lymphoma, which is the kind of Bacchus lymphoma that we are seeing here. And uh, very soon, we're also going to describe the molecular profile, the mutational profile of breast cancer in African women. So there's a lot of groundbreaking research that's happening here at the Institute. Over time, we have uh, developed a way of uh, reviewing our patients and speaking to our patients and following up our patients. And so we have a cohort of patients, and they come from all over the country, uh, some of them even across the borders. We have patients as far as uh, Burundi, uh, Rwanda, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. We have patients as far as Sudan. Ideally, cancer is treated in three or four modalities. We have the surgery, because in the initial stages, we can move out that lesion by surgery. Then we can use the cancer drug, which is called chemotherapy, which is given inside your body through blood vessels, and at times you, you swallow them. Then we have uh, radiotherapy, which uses beams of um, radioactive beams that act on the cancer cells. When the cancer is detected early, it uh, cures. Because the cancer is staged, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. We have a program that runs every week. We screen for cervical, and for all other cancers, breast and so on. And that runs every week from within. One third of all cancers can be cured. One third of all cancers can be treated with the view to prolonging life. And one third can be treated with the view to making sure the patient has, is comfortable. Good palliation. People uh, usually don't think that a government should actually work together with a civil society. I think in an area like cancer, uh, I would say that would be difficult because uh, we have very little resources and if the little resources that we have are divided whereby uh, the civil society or private uh, uh, practitioners are doing their own thing, and then government is doing its own thing. These resources are going to be spread far too thin. So the best thing to do is to see how we can actually bring the expertise, the interest, the passion of everybody together. And then government just simply provides the framework how this can work up. The Uganda Cancer Society was um, first established in 2011. Uh, registered as a company limited by guarantee to provide basically charity services. It came about uh, as a result of civil society, a number of organizations in there um, coming together to feel that they need an umbrella organization to better coordinate um, what they do in terms of cancer control. So it's actually a formulation of different member organizations coming together to form an umbrella organization that then will help to actually coordinate the kind of work they do for systematic response in the fight against cancer. When we heard the stories that made the formation of UCCF, it clearly connected with me because it was clear that any action you made at that time to the foundation made an impact. And I want to thank the Uganda Cancer Institute, especially the leadership and the staff who started this uh, initiative. Uh, we are being um, um, a, a victim of our own success because uh, with the fact that now we are, uh, we are getting the space for treating patients are there, the numbers of doctors are increasing, we have started creating awareness in the community. So people keep on coming. Uh, so. Uh, 
uh, we are a victim of our own uh, success in a way. And that now inspired us to kind of do two things. One, to understand who are the people who are actually coming. And then uh, secondly, to kind of come up with what can we do. Management had planned to have the centers, the feeding centers to what to UCI, such that people who don't have transport can be treated there, and the oncologist can go there and review them. And we had that exercise started already. It, it is headed by Dr. Abrahams, then the nurse, it was me, and then the pharmacist. And we went to Umbarara, opened up a center, and it is running very well. We went to Arua, tried to open up a center, but the human resource was a problem. The decentralization is really a, a key thing, and it's important, because cancer should be central located. People move from all the four regions of the country to access service. But from the time we opened our clinic in Barara, we have about 1,700 patients who are attending the clinic in Barara. Those would be added to the number here. So we have a pharmacist who is trained in Barara, a doctor who is trained in Barara, so he can be able to do that that I would do here. But now he can do it there and that's reduce the workload. If we open another branch in, in Bali, another one in Guru, another one in Arua as, as we're planning to, this will reduce first the workload here, but two, uh, uh, the, the, the human resource would all be distributed all around, other than having all our cells here centrally located. It's important that that we go where patients are, that patients come to us, because then we catch them there early. Cancer Institute um, has been it's been a work in progress, but it's had a very big impact on the community already. Like I mentioned, we have a catchment area of eight to 11 million people. All these people are coming here and they can access care that they would have had to get only in Mulago. So that has helped in terms of patient adherence. We've also had patients who have been traveling to Mulago, but they are from the Western region and they've been transferred to get their care here. And it makes it easier for them to keep coming for treatment because the distance is shorter and they can afford to come as opposed to going to Kampala. Um, it has also improved on sensitization of the community about the fact that there is cancer out there and people need to come for screening, people need to come for early treatment. Um, it has been a very big benefit to the university because um, we have some students who are doing research here, postgraduate students, undergraduate students in different departments come to the unit and they can use the information that we have been collecting over the few years to come up with different research projects. The institute is now really set uh, to take off, uh, to take its place among world-renowned um, cancer centers, uh, most uh, obviously in Africa, uh, I think give, if we are given uh, a few more years, we are not going to have any rivals within the, within the continent. Some of the achievements we've made, um, we now have training programs to train cancer doctors, something we never had for many years, and that's a big achievement. We are, we are the center of excellency in the region for oncology. I see Uganda Cancer Institute as the best institute in providing um, cancer care in the whole East and Central Africa, and the best institute in providing research regarding uh, cancer care. And this research will result into better care within the, the region. So we are working towards that. We've tried to look for more resources through writing proposals to different partners, to government, to, 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 to look for more funding. And some of those proposals and plans have been successful, which have brought in more resources to the institute. The government has put up a six-level cancer ward, none in the African region has cancer ward that big. Okay. The government has put up with the aid with Fred Hutchinson, we have a research center, again, second to none. 
Now there's the East African Oncology Institute, and it's up and running. Before we actually occupied this particular building, we used to face a lot of challenges with the space. Patients used to come, they used to lean and sleep outside the wards, because if one would come for treatment, and the wards are full to capacity, we would used to have like 50% floor cases. We used to combine children and adults in one ward because of lack of space. So right now we have separated the children, they have their own ward. I see the institute in its current plan and strategy taking on more and more cutting edge research and re-establishing itself as a, a research hub, not only in Africa but in the world for cancer care. We are going to have the biggest um, radiation center possibly in Eastern Central Africa. By the end of all the construction, we will have eight bunkers. Now that's bigger than any other center uh, in the region, in one place. And all these uh, bunkers will have equipment. So training for radiation specialists will also be done here uh, for this region. There is a plan to set up um, infrastructure for a standalone cancer hospital in the region that will be facilitated by the Uganda Cancer Institute. And this is going to impact, of course, the different departments. And even at the level where we are that we had started, we had already started to have impact in other departments. Um, I chair a multidisciplinary committee that sits every two weeks to discuss new patients, and it means we sit with doctors from other departments. So capacity is growing in pathology department, in radiology department, in the surgery department, because cancer care is something you can't do as a, you know, as a lone soldier. Uganda has been chosen as the regional training center for East Africa. Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi. Training in oncology. This Regional Center of Excellence is supposed to promote training of cancer specialists, promote research, but importantly, all this must contribute to patient care. We want to reach a stage where all the cancer care that patients need, that people need, can be um, obtained here at the Uganda Cancer Institute. That is, we need to stop the um, medical tourism that's happening. You've heard of cases of patients going to India, patients going to South Africa, patients going to other countries. And our goal is that in the future, all the patients will be coming at the Uganda Cancer Institute. Now, of course, you can't stop people from going outside the country, but what we want to provide is uh, the state of art cancer care so that nobody has need to visit other countries for cancer care. Whatever cancer care you need, it's available here at the Uganda Cancer Institute. And that really is the goal of the funding from the African Development Bank through, through the government of Uganda. The future of the Institute is very, very bright.